The Alberta government is threatening another legal challenge over the Federal Impact Assessment Act. Premier Daniel Smith says it will happen if the Trudeau government doesn't agree to more changes by the end of October. Last year, the Supreme Court of Canada deemed parts of the act unconstitutional, but Alberta says amendments passed in June do not go far enough when it comes to major resource projects. And with me now is Alberta Energy and Minerals Minister Brian Jean. Minister, good to see you again. Good to see you too. Thanks for having me. So let's start with what exactly does your government want to see happen over the next four weeks? Well, what we'd like to see is respect for the Federal Supreme Court of Canada and respect for the ruling that they made. So what we asked the federal government to do is to follow that ruling and to recognize that the Alberta government and other provincial jurisdictions have the right to our resources and to um, respect that ruling and and truly that's where they've fallen short is is just you know they've had two spankings from the federal government from the supreme court of canada now and they've just tried to uh, go back to the drawing bo board and do a reach around and by gibo's own admission he's uh, he's you know flogging a, a horse that is just not going to move. This is a situation where we're going to continue to go back to the Supreme Court of Canada, where the federal government is again disrespecting what the Supreme Court of Canada has said. Uh, you know, they're wasting taxpayers' money on an ideological political pursuit that they know is ultimately going nowhere. They're, in my opinion, on a, a federal government that's on life support. The federal government did, though, make some changes to the act earlier this year. There were amendments. So, from your government's perspective, where are those amendments falling short? Well, they fall short in recognizing our uh, ability to deal with our own natural resources under Section 93 of the Constitution. And in particular, uh, the Supreme Court of Canada laid out many places where they should uh, leave it in our jurisdiction. In particular, we saw recently a, a relationship uh, build with the, the government of Ontario in relation to a um, major highway going through Ontario and whether or not that should be under um, federal scrutiny. And and frankly, Gibo himself admitted that uh, if he went to court, he would lose on that particular case. And so he made men, you know, amends to the government of Ontario uh, simply to appease them, recognizing that if it was challenged, it he would lose. Um, you know, to go through the Supreme Court of Canada's decision, you can see a number of places where the government of Canada is just obviously trying to do a reach around and ignoring what the Supreme Court of Canada has said related to jurisdiction, in particular natural resources jurisdiction and our industry. Okay, the federal government though says there was ample consultation. Your government, the province of Alberta says there was a lack of meaningful uh, consultation on these changes. So uh, for those of us on the outside, where's the disconnect here? Well, the disconnect is on the federal government recognizing and just following what the Supreme Court of Canada said. Uh, we're not asking, uh, we don't want to go back to court, but the truth is that if they don't follow what the federal government or the Supreme Court of Canada has said, we have to, we have no choice. We think they're doing, a, a, frankly, you know, trying to change the law in a, the minimum amount of t uh, ways to reflect what their ultimate purpose is, which is to have control over our, our industries and to try to control the industries through whatever means they can, even though they know they can't. And, you know, our constitution, our country was set up recognizing the vast uh, boundaries between our different provinces and territories. I mean, we're the second largest country in the world and we have populations right across every, every part of this great country. Uh, so we have different cultures, different people, and we have to re recognize that the, the people that set up our constitution did so in a way to make us stronger by working together than trying to, you know, have one dominant power in Ottawa that's so far away from reality of the people, for instance, in the West or the East or the North. Uh, we need to have respect by the federal government on the jurisdictional rights of each province. And part of that right is the right to uh, deal with our resources and not, for instance, have a cap on our oil and gas produced. Um, you know, we, we believe we can reduce emissions and we are reducing emissions and we have reduced emissions. Um, we believe we can reduce water consumption. We have reduced water consumption dramatically over the last 40 years, particularly in the oil sands, where a huge portion of it is recycled in the 90 percentile. We are able to do things better and we'll get things done better here on the ground for the people that we represent, including healthcare, including um, education, including uh, 
the exploitation of our natural resources. We saw just recently in Fort Chippewa in Alberta, up, up north uh, here, uh, down at the bottom of the Ath or the top of the Athabasca River, um, we saw the federal government uh, being called out for Transport Canada not cleaning up its environment uh, after they, you know, left nothing short of a, what I consider to be a toxic spill. They should. Uh, clean it up, but they won't. Why don't they clean it up? Because they're not close enough to people to actually recognize that this is a priority of the people, uh, just like they're not close enough to our industries to recognize how important it is that people have jobs and people have quality of life and people are able to earn a living um, and a good living. So okay, I want I think, to come back, you know, the though. federal government just needs to stick out of our business. Okay, I do want to come back to the, the timeline of this, the four-week timeline, because we have heard from the federal environment minister's office saying that the timing of this is cynical. This is an arbitrary deadline that comes at the same time as the Premier faces a leadership review and wants to look tough for the hardcore base within his party. Uh, Stephen Gilbo's office is also calling this uh, reckless political games. How do you respond to that? Uh, I, I don't really care. Uh, I don't think it's a reckless political game. This is about our industries it's about people's jobs it's about alberta families it's about the record number of people that want to come to alberta and have come to alberta over the last number of years because they know that this is a place where we will stick up for them and uh, we will make sure that they have the ability to make a good living you know it's no uh, it's no secret that daniel smith our premier is a very strong premier and that she will stick up for the people of alberta whenever she needs to and this is another example of her doing that and i'm very proud of her doing that so this isn't just meant to coincide with the fact that you've got your convention coming up at the beginning of November and the Premier is going to be facing a leadership review uh, in Red Deer. Well, as a past leader of a political party, I can assure you that things are always going on in your in the political sector as they do go on in the, the government or opposition sector. So there are always there's always issues of of uh, leadership and leadership review that are constantly ongoing. This is just one more step in a process that political leaders have to do as a result of the choice to become one. But, you know, she's going to go through with a, a very healthy margin, I'm sure. And I'm very excited about being there to support her in that. Uh, she's been a great leader and she's a great premier. And I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, some amazing things happening for the people of Alberta as a result of her leadership. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Alberta Energy and Minerals Minister Brian Jean, thanks for your time on this. Always a pleasure. Thank you.